Stop seeking validation from people who actually don't even like themselves, that barely like themselves. These people have not done the inner work. They're not trying to heal. Yet you're placing their opinion on a freaking pedestal for what? Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Diane Monet. Thank you for tuning in for yet another video. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. So today's video, we're going to be talking about where we place our worth. We often place our worth in superficial things that actually don't hold any real weight in real life. And then we, in turn, continue to let these things determine our value and what we believe that we deserve. I'm talking about placing your worth in what kind of car you drive, the grades you get in school, how many likes you get on Instagram, how many people try to talk to you, and even, you know, your body type and also your sexual capabilities in the bedroom, letting that determine your worth and how worthy you are of being a partner. Like, we're going to talk about it, okay? So I'm going to go into all these different areas in detail, along with the origin of some of these negative patterns and um, mindsets that we have that cause us to place our worth in these areas, and then also where you should be placing your worth. So if you're interested in that, keep watching. So quick disclaimer, all of these areas that I'm touching on, these are all from areas of experience. So this is not coming from a place of judgment. I'm just trying to help y'all identify these areas where you place your worth and level up. So the first area we're going to touch on is placing your worth in how much money you have or what kind of car you drive. So this often stems from social media and comparing ourselves to other people's lives. But what y'all have to realize is that social media is not real. Like people are posers like, no hate and stuff. People really be posing. Like, of course, some people want to celebrate their wins and they're legit, but a lot of people will literally go into debt to please other people or impress other people. And you're over here thinking it's real, thinking it's legit, and be like, dang, I wish I was them, or oh, I'm trash because I don't drive a Benz, or I'm trash because I didn't buy my first house, you know? Like, you really have to keep everything in perspective. Like, perspective is really anything. Like, the end of the day on social media, people aren't showing their losses. At least most people aren't. So you're only seeing their highs. You don't see what that person's going through on a daily. You don't see what bills they actually have on their table at home. What L's their business took last week. You know? So it's just like, you can't get caught up in just what you're seeing on there. Because it's not real. And on the other hand, if you, like, feel like you're financially secure and you have, like, more money than you know could have imagined you're super happy your business is super successful like that's all great but at the end of the day it's like that can't become your life because if something crazy happens like literally a whole pandemic a lot of businesses didn't make you know survive this pandemic like say something bad happens and your business doesn't survive are you going to be okay of course it's going to be devastating regardless but are you going to lose your identity because you no longer have that source of income like what you know like what's at your core like if you put everything into how much in your salary or your car like all these things can be temporary just as quick as you got them you can lose them so i'm just saying that you need to know who you are at the core and know that your value surpasses your monetary you know material things that you have so the next area we're going to talk about is if you are a student or even if you're not with grades or, you know, whether or not you get a certain promotion and letting that determine your value. Um, so for one, I'm a big believer in everything happens the way it's supposed to and at the right timing. Yes, it may not feel like that, but I'm a firm believer in God's perfect timing. Yes, it may be disappointing at one point or you might not get the result that you wanted, but you have to remember that. Everything usually has a way of working out, and if it wasn't meant for you then, then it wasn't meant for you, you know? Like, I feel like what's truly for you is for you. With that said, when it comes to grades, like, as a grad student, I know how frustrating it can be, you know, when you have a certain expectation for yourself, and you don't meet that goal, you know, whether it's, you know, one of the A, you gotta be, or you gotta C. What you have to understand is, like, everybody takes L. Like, nobody's perfect. Just because you gotta C doesn't mean you're dumb, doesn't mean you don't deserve to be in your program, like... You have to understand that you are worthy of where you are. And that just comes with, you know, knowing who you are, like knowing you're smart, knowing you're capable. I know imposter syndrome is real, but knowing you are capable and that you can, you know, meet certain goals. But everyone falls short sometimes. And it doesn't make you any less of a student or any less deserving of whatever, being a member of whatever profession that you're trying to be a member of. And in terms of, you know, getting a promotion at work, like I said, I feel like everything that's supposed to be for you is for you. And you really sometimes maybe even have to like check your motivations for wanting that promotion. Like, is it on a power trip? Or, you know, of course, like everyone wants, everyone wants to get promoted, you know, you work hard. But I would just say, you know, check your heart and don't let not getting that promotion 
get you to the point where you know somebody else get it you're like envying them or talking bad about them like i said just check your heart at the end of the day and your motivations for wanting certain things and i feel like you know like i said things have a way of working out like maybe like there's some that could literally be something on the horizon that you just can't see that god sees and he's protecting you from he doesn't want you in that you know level of power right now maybe he doesn't think you're ready maybe he doesn't think you're going to work well with that you know the bigger boss like there's a lot of moving pieces that are often working that we just don't even see you know and i'm not saying that you shouldn't have certain standards for yourself or expectations for yourself i think that's what you know continues to help us grow and you know keeps us moving towards and working towards our goals i'm just saying don't let it be your end all be all especially like with grades like if you're like oh i never get b's i'm always on top of this or i'm so so smart like yes that's great but some schools will have a way of humbling you you know like like i said everyone takes an l sometimes you know and same thing with the job like Everything isn't always going to be smooth. And I'm just saying, don't lose sight of who you are and question your worth and your identity just because, you know, something might just be off or you don't meet a certain goal that you were expecting. So now I'm going to touch on social media and the validation that sometimes we desire to seek from that. So for one, you know, we all, everyone, you know, cares about likes. Like, I'm not about to act like I don't care about how many likes I get on Instagram, but I don't determine, you know, I don't let that determine my worth as an individual about how good I look or if it's like if you have a business like your certain product like a key thing I have to tell myself especially with being a new YouTuber is don't judge your art based on how much applause it receives. If you don't get the likes, if you don't get the views, don't count yourself out or think that your content or your product is trash because people aren't liking it. There's so many factors when it comes to like social media in terms of like trying to get engagement. So it's just like, I would just say, look at the bigger picture and just don't get caught up. And you don't need that validation. Like, yes, with time, you want to build a certain following and want to make sure your followers are liking your product, but it's not every time. Like, don't get caught up in, you know, wanting to seek attention and validation from social media because it's just a losing battle. And so with social media discussions comes appearance, obviously. There's a plethora of people out there on social media, all different body types, skin types, hair types, all of that. So it can be very easy, you know, to compare yourself or think that, or when you see that, you know, society or culture celebrating a certain body type over another, or, you know, trying to put short men down, like, oh, if you're not 5'10 or whatever, if you're not six feet, then you're not good enough to date me. People be capping on the internet, okay? A lot of people love short men. A lot of people love petite women. A lot of people love curvy women, you know, BBW women. Like, don't fall for the hype, okay? Your body type is beautiful. You don't need to change it for the sake of somebody else's validation or opinion, which half of the time, like I said, is not real. Just chatter on the internet. So, yeah, you shouldn't even want to change yourself to be with a certain person. Like, that's a whole conversation, but yeah like you're beautiful find somebody that loves you for who you are and celebrate yourself you know we're all beautifully and uniquely made like if we all look the same that'd be so boring okay so and like i said don't get caught up thinking that all people or all men or all women want a certain thing because y'all know that's not the truth twitter be lying to y'all okay like there's a place for all of us just because you don't fit into a certain box doesn't mean you're any less than or any less capable of getting wifed or you know being somebody's girl or boyfriend all right so now we're gonna talk about what you're doing in the bedroom so like now <laughs> i feel like a lot of people don't really talk about this or make this association but a lot of people will feel pressured to perform a certain way in the bedroom and let that determine whether or not they're deserving of being a boyfriend or a girlfriend or being treated a certain way and i feel like honestly as what i had to notice for myself was listening to certain music like trap music will have you messed up they literally it's all cool like i love trap music i'm not gonna lie but they send subliminal messages you know that are working in your subconscious that you're not even aware of like oh you need to be doing it like this or flipping like this or turning around on it like this like that's not realistic and if you're not doing that it's okay it's okay whoever likes you is going to like you for you okay trust me you don't have to be doing tricks and flips in the bedroom because I talked to guys personally who've experienced all of that and they still didn't really like the girl because they just didn't really like them. And I'm sure it's the same with, you know, the other way around. If someone don't want you, they don't want you, period. Like you can be doing the most and if they don't want to be with you, they don't want to be with you. And also, there's nothing wrong with being a virgin. There's nothing wrong with being celibate or abstinent, okay? 
Don't let anyone shame you or make you feel weird. I've had people try to make me feel weird about it. Know who you are, okay? Don't care about other people's opinions when it comes to that. At the end of the day, it's your life. It's your sex life or lack thereof, okay? So don't let anyone try to make you feel like you need to be doing this or you should be doing that to get a man. If someone wants you, they want you, okay? Sex or not. Flips, spins, tricks or not. Like at the end of the day, your sex can provide what someone else's heart is unwilling to produce, period, okay? And I feel like if someone is superficial, you know, about sex, like, oh, if you can't put it down right, then I don't want you. Why do you want that person anyway? It's clearly, they're not even willing to work with you. They don't really care about who you are as a person. It was always just about sex to them. So red flag, that's a good rejection. You should just keep moving. Don't even try to chase after them. At the end of the day, you'll just end up losing yourself trying to prove that you're good enough for someone who wasn't even going to choose you regardless. Sorry. Cut your losses, trust me. And for guys, don't let your friends pressure you into thinking that you have to have a certain body count in order to be the man or be cool. It's okay to be selective, trust me. If anything, it's a good thing. It's That's what you should be doing, okay? So don't let anyone trick you into thinking that you have to be running through a whole bunch of women because it's cool or because it's a cute thing to do because it's not. So now we're done with that. I'm going to go into a little more of the origins of, like I said, where these thought patterns come from. We've already touched on social media, but I'm going to give you a few more. So from one, parents. Growing up, obviously, the main voices that you hear and main feedback that you get is from your parents. And if they're struggling with placing their worth in certain things, whether it's money or, you know, certain accomplishments in their life, they're going to project that onto you. But it's your job to realize when that's happening and understand that, okay, I'm going to stop the cycle here. I'm not going to continue to place my worth in these things and let these superficial things, changing things, determine who I am. It comes from a place of love, you know, but at the end of the day, you have to be your own person and recognize when someone is projecting their own issues onto you and also with that certain toxic individuals it can be people you call your friends or other family members some people don't want to see you win and some people are freaking haters okay regardless so they're gonna tear you down they're gonna say oh you don't look good in the outfit because of your body type or oh this isn't that or he doesn't want you because you're unable to do this people be hating okay don't listen to them no, recognize a hater. If you feel, sometimes you can see, and then sometimes if you just look at them randomly and catch them looking at you, that's your confirmation, but let me get off my little well, yeah. On a serious note, like a lot of people feel threatened by you, and so they're gonna use any way they can to tear you down. And a lot of people pick up where you place your worth. So if they recognize that's a certain area you're weak in, they're gonna use it to their advantage and use it to manipulate you, to keep you under them. Stop seeking validation from people who actually don't even like themselves, that barely like themselves. These people have not done the inner work. They're not trying to heal, yet you're placing their opinion on a freaking pedestal. For what? For why? You are the bomb. Don't nobody try to tell you different. Period. We all have room for improvement, of course, but if someone's literally trying to put you down or just being nasty or cynical or, like I said, trying to spite you where you, they know you're weak, that's not your friend. And that person doesn't need to be in your life. Like we touched on before, social media and music, even like TV shows and movies you watch, just be very intentional and conscious of the messages that you're feeding yourself because we can think stuff is innocent, like, oh, I'm just, you know, to the beat or, oh, this is a good show, blah, blah, blah. We can take things, you know, think is light, but the whole time it's, like I said, working in our subconscious and we can take things that are being said to us, different messages are being fed to us as facts when they're actually not. So finally, to where we should be placing our worth. I recommend placing your worth in something that is unchanging. And the only thing I know that is unchanging is God and God's love. If you're not a person of faith, I understand, but this is my personal belief and it's what has worked for me. So like I said, I used to place my worth in all of these changing things, all these superficial things that are based on human reactions when none of that is reliable. You cannot rely on people. The only person you can rely on is yourself. You can't control anyone but yourself. I now find my identity in knowing that I am a daughter of the creator of the universe. Like, that is huge, okay? Like, the same spirit that created the oceans, the mountains, and that rose Jesus from the dead lives inside of you. That's the power you have. That's not going anywhere. No one can take that from you. That is within you. And that is where you place your worth. Knowing that you are loved by God, that you are a child of God. Not 
someone else's goofy opinion or how many likes you got or how much money you got in the bank or how new your car is. It's knowing who you are in God. And having, placing your identity in the creator, the one unchanging thing in this world. John 14, 20. On that day, you will realize that I am my father and you are in me and I am in you. Jesus is within us. We have Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit all within us. Like at the end of the day, nobody's perfect, okay? But that's what's so beautiful about the love of God. Like we don't have to be perfect to be loved by God, to be accepted by God, to be validated by God. It's okay to be imperfect. That is what makes his love so beautiful. He is forgiving. He's not setting conditions like, oh, if you're not like this, you can't hang with me. If you're like that, then you can't talk to me. If you don't have that in the bank, you can't hang with me. God isn't like that. God is not like people. God doesn't judge. I'm just saying it's very important to know who you are at the core because if you let them, people will place so many limitations on you and try to tell you who you are. And if you don't know who you are, if you're constantly placing yourself in all these changing things, all these superficial things that don't matter, what are you going to have to show for it? You're just going to flow with the wind. Somebody tells you you're ugly. Oh, dang, I really must be ugly. Somebody tells you your product sucks. Dang, my product really does suck. I mean, I should just stop while I'm not ahead. Literally, know who you are. Because people will literally try to define you guys. I'm trying to tell you, people will put their projections on you. And if you let them, they will succeed. I love this verse, Colossians 3, 2. Set your mind on things above, not on this earth. This stuff doesn't matter at the end of the day. Like, yes, it's nice having a nice car, having a new bag, getting valid. Like, you know, getting your likes, you know, you worked hard on taking that picture, getting your likes. It's nice. But at the end of the day, like in the big picture, none of that stuff matters. None of that stuff matters. Your Mercedes Benz isn't laying with you at night. Your Mercedes Benz isn't looking at you in the mirror. Like if you lost all that stuff today and it was just you and yourself in the mirror, are you going to be okay? Are you going to be okay? That's what you have to ask yourself. Like if you take all these external factors off the table, what do you have left? Who are you at your core? Who are you? What do you stand for? What do you know to be true? Because if you're constantly placing your worth in these changing things, things that rely on people, you're never going to be satisfied. Like I said, people are unreliable and all these things are constantly changing, but God is constant. That you can bet your money on, okay? So yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. I just really want you to know how special you are and to not use all these qualifiers to determine your worth or how worthy you are of being celebrated, being appreciated, being loved. Like you are worthy. You are worthy and you are powerful because you are a son or a daughter of God. Have confidence in that, take pride in that, okay? But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give me feedback. If you liked it, great, give it a thumbs up. If not, then let me know. Let me know what you didn't like. Let me know if you disagree with any points that I made. I'm definitely open for discussion. If you feel like someone needs to hear this, if you're a good friend and you want to give a little friendly nudge, make sure you send it to them. But yeah, guys, I love you so much. I thank you for the support. Um, if you just give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more, I'd really appreciate it. Have a blessed day.